Hello, Leela Gonzalez here. I'm the author of The Reinvented Woman and founder of LeelaGonzalez.com. And what I do is I really help ambitious leaders get into their true essence and build deeper relationships with people to build more wealth and more uh, well-being really in their life and in, and in the world. Um, so I'm here today, I'm so excited. I'm actually, I'm here today to talk about Bowspring Yoga. I'm gonna plug in this headset actually, cause I think the sound is a little creepy. <laughs> okay, so I hope uh, some people hop on. And if you see me looking down, it's just I'm looking down at my laptop. I'm, I'm still 100% with you. I'm just looking down. Actually, I'm probably with me. I'm with you and I'm with me. So anyways, with that said, I hope you can hear me okay. And if anybody comes on live, I'm going to say hello. And um, if you're here watching later, replay, I'm going to uh, share this. This Bowspring Yoga is something that's really changed my life. So I'm just here to share more about it. And um, thank you. Thank you for joining if you're watching on the replay, basically. Thank you. I appreciate you being here. It's really a, this is fun. Um, so I was thinking before, I'm going to go just go ahead and get started. I was going to hop on, wait a couple minutes, but it's a, it's a Sunday afternoon. And I hope all of you are having a wonderful day. A wonderful, wonderful day. It's. I'm gonna uh, go outside for a little walk, or, or um, and play around with some. Bows. Speedy Gonzalez. He likes to get out, so I, I uh, let him. I, I take him out of the house. Anyway, so the bow spring yoga. What is it? It's really the primary difference. I would say the uh, between traditional yoga. And bowspring yoga is it's dynamic, meaning you move, you bounce, you spring. Okay, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about the physical form, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the um, mental, the mind-body connection, the mental capacity that you need to even do this practice. It's not easy. It takes it's a lot of mindfulness. So. Um, I'll talk about the physical form, the mental capacity, kind of the, the mindset you need to have to even be able to do it. And um, then also we'll talk a little bit about emotional responses and releases and how you can spring forward in your life, you know, literally your back body gets strong. And, and then a little bit about spiritual um, uh, impacts, potential as well for some people. I had a spiritual awakening um, I had been doing yoga for a little while, and then I, uh, I tapped into this new form of yoga, and it, it really just phew, lit my nervous system up, um, really helped me get in touch with my energetic being, and I'm watching the same thing happen with my clients and, 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 and friends that are also Bowspringers, and people from around the world, same thing. It's like their entire lives are changing, and it can happen with any, you know, this is only one tool. So it's not that this is different uh, or, or better or worse than something else. Um, it is for some people. And I'm going to, hey, Emily, she's a bow springer. Emily, um, I would say, you know, I, I'm going to go ahead and speak for you if that's okay a little bit. But you, I was just saying we're going to cover, I'm just going to chat a little bit today about physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual results of the bow spring. Would you say, I would love to hear just even a yes or a high five or, oh, thanks for the hearts. Um, anybody out there, I love the hearts and likes. They're so fun. Um, yeah, I mean, I have, uh, Emily is, uh, experienced all of that. I would say Bowspring changed my life exclamation point. Yeah. Bowspring changed our life. It's just, a it's a whole new way of being. It's a, t it's asking you to totally shift your paradigm about who you are as a person, what you are as a being even. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Emily, I, I'm going to, since you're here, I don't know where you are and that's okay if you can't uh, participate, but I'm just going to do a little bit of a radiant heart meditation. And what this is going to do is going to explain to you that the Bowspring system, it's a system where you get to figure out the shape and engagement of, of 10 different areas of your body. Um, and when you get them all in a certain alignment and engage, then you can um, open up even more. And you, what you're doing is you're integrating the inside and the outside spaces. So we're going to get on the inside space first. This is the most important part of the practice. A lot of practices will talk about... Um, uh, moving from your core, being from your core, living at your core, holding from your core. I'm actually going to say uh, live from the softness of your heart. 
And if you're with me now, I'm just going to do a really short meditation where you close your eyes. <clears throat> and you, in order to get into your what we call your heart space, it's really the center of your rib cage. You shift your awareness. So you think about instead of being in your eyeballs or your head or your face somewhere, you start to feel like, uh, can I sit closer into the center of my rib cage, right behind your sternum, right in front of your breastbone? And oftentimes it could be a little challenging to get there. So you use your breath, inhaling through your nose, down into your heart space, exhaling out of your mouth, softening your throat like a ha, like you're fogging up a mirror. And just starting to let a fluid breath in and out, like waves of the ocean coming in and coming out. And you'll notice as you breathe into the center of your heart, the center of your rib cage, the whole inside space of your rib cage can soften and even expand circumferentially. So circumferential expansion from the center of your heart, use your breath. Circumferential means like a ball, like a round white light that expands from the center of your heart. And what this is, is this is your willpower, but it's a sense of compassionate willpower, softening, opening, Allowing more breath in and allowing yourself to soften on the inside so that your form can be less rigid and more fluid. And even now, if your eyes are closed still, if you're with me, um, see if you can sway a little bit side to side, feeling how your rib cage can actually be independent of the rest of your body. So it's fluid. Your hot, uh, rib cage is like a hot air balloon. And if you straighten your arms, wherever they are, you can even move your ribs a little bit more. You might get a little bit more side to side lateral movement. So the bow spring, you know, I'm going to take you through some, the, some feeling and then hopefully you'll get it a little bit more. So the, it, the primary, you start with the system. You start first with this compassionate willpower inside this, um, knowingness that you can expand, that you can grow, that you can open and that you're safe. And and there's, you know, there's a whole bunch to it. I can't teach you at all today. But um, there's this piece of the bowstring that's so special. It helps you get inside yourself because you're not just your outer skin. You're not just your head. You're not just your elbow. You're not just your toe. You're all of it and you're all of it that's inside. And so what's cool about what we just did together, if you were able to participate, is that you got, you got a feeling probably inside of more calmness. Um, if, you, if you feel calmness at this point, relative to when you start, even if you were just watching me close my eyes and talk slow, um, or if you went ahead and did it, or if you didn't, maybe go back and just see, like, if I were to close my eyes and bring my breath Use my breath as a tool. Use your breath as a tool to touch your inside space. Mm. You calm down in a micro moment. Unreal. So the breath and the body are tools. They work together with your awareness. And the bowspring teaches you how to open up your rib cage. So here's the deal. Most of the time, I'm sitting on a ball, so you're going to see me bouncing up and down. Excuse the blur. Uh, most of the time, your elbows are probably, you just check it out, most of it's all around the world. My teachers, they travel all around the world, John and Desi. And um, they say that every, you know, every culture all around the world uh, does, you know, has this is very, very similar, except the very native cultures that haven't become as, um, as uh, don't, aren't sitting in, at computers and all of that. So, most of the time, your elbows are probably behind your rib cage, and what that means is that your shoulder blades, and you can't see, you can kind of see it in your shirt, but your shoulder blades are what they what we say closing off the back of your heart. 
This is a huge premise that I'm spending all this time with the, with the bowspring. So the bowspring is a dynamic, springy, bowy, curvy form. But the primary intention is to create more capacity in your heart, more opening on your inside. So you use your outside, we get strong on the outside, so the inside has something to kind of push and expand against. So if you, in your day-to-day -day life, this is what's so cool about the bowspring, there's little pieces of it you can use in your day-to-day -day life, even if you're not engaging all 10 parts and expanding all day long. You can use your just the shape of the um, bowspring form to um, open up your heart, open up your capacity for love, open up, uh, you know, your body holds on to emotion. And we all know that because at some point in your life, you've probably felt sad and your body hasn't felt real good. You know, I was going, when I was going through a divorce like four years ago, um, I remember sitting in a ball a lot, <laughs> like this, crying a lot, you know, just crying a lot, always crying. <laughs> Um, and I didn't feel good. My body didn't feel good. I went on a road trip actually at one point and I was driving. Hey, Chica, thanks for thanks. And I was, and I remember my whole back just like killing me the whole time. And I was like doing yoga and all this stuff still, but um, I was always like bent over and it just didn't feel good. So this is this bowsprit. So it's back. I'm going to plug this in. Hang on. It's no wonder. It always happens when I get kind of emotional. <laughs> it's the energy. So, yeah, my back body was hurting, basically. And I was weak on the back side. So what this bowspring does, it, it helps build your back, your back body strength, builds your confidence, gets you in tune with the inside space. So I'm going to talk about your elbows. And basically, my point was this, that... Um, your body holds on to emotion. So my back body was holding on to emotion. I was weak, weak, weak. I wasn't ready to address my issues, basically. And so uh, what I did was st I started to use my breath, just like you can. Like we just did a little bit um, where you uh, go on the inside and start to feel what I see, this circumferential expansion around the rib cage. So the rib cage is like a hot air balloon, okay? I know this is what is bowspring yoga, but I'm talking about the rib cage because Ladies and gentlemen, those ribs. Whew. So much capacity for breath, so much capacity for life, so much capacity for power, for confidence, for heart space, for more compassion. So uh, the back body, let your breath and your shoulder blades start to, uh, let your breath go back there and your shoulder blades, instead of always going back, your elbows back, bring them forward. Yeah, lift your chest up. And then, you know, sometimes if you bring them too, foot, too far forward, the chest kind of closes up, so you want to watch that. But if you lift up and just let your shoulders go a little bit wider, and then us bowspringers, anybody around the world who does bowspring, they've learned this tool, this key, this magical place within your body that's holding so much and has so much capacity. Anytime people do this, they go, Ugh! and that's good because... <laughs> Because you're kind of, you're, when we say sticky, your connective tissue is all stuck here. So I'm going to talk about that more in a little bit. But what is the bowspring? So the bowspring is this. It's a system. It's a system where you use 10 key parts of the area. You can bring your awareness, actually, to 10 key parts of your, of, of your body. It puts your spine in a dynamic position. It puts your whole body in a dynamic position, meaning you're awake. You're ready for action. Boom, at any point you can stand up, you can get up. Your back body's really strong and lifts up. And so you don't have that feeling of, um, you know, computer, cell phone, iPad, whatever your choice of, you know, uh, if you bent over and look at anything electronically, I do. I get hooked on some YouTube thing that I'm watching sometimes. And before I know it, I'm like, oh, it doesn't feel good. So what this bowspring does, it, it helps uh, lift us up away from that tendency of, of feeling old. It gets us back to our youthful position. Um, and the rib cage is the, if you, if, you, if, I, if you were to take one tool, one thing, one uh, component, one lesson away, or one, one piece of your body that you should keep your awareness in, anything, 
with this practice uh, is keep your awareness in the center of your ribcage of your heart. It will keep you lifted. Keep it there and then keep it the direction of it up away from the earth. Because if your heart stays lifted, it's not like always. We need to sleep sometimes. We need to rest. But when the heart stays lifted and the head and everything's up, whew, you feel lighter. You feel <laughs> brighter. You feel more confident. You feel like, oh my God, life doesn't suck so bad. I'm not so stressed out. Like, what was I worried about? Um, you noticed if you get pissed off. It doesn't feel so good. You bring all your awareness here. Hey, Leslie, my ballerina chica. So good to see you, babe. Uh, I'm just talking about bow spring. I'm really just, I'm getting into it little piece by piece. I'm kind of going on and on about the rib cage. And the reason is that the, the rib cage is often what holds our emotion. You know, anytime somebody says something that hurts your feelings, feel that you might go, ooh, ooh. You get smaller. Uh, women, anytime you look at yourself in the, in the photo, you're taking like a selfie, a friend's photo, what do you do? You get, you get small. So over time, what this bowspring is, it's okay to get small sometimes, but the bowspring is to open you up, give you more confidence, more lightness, get you back to that youthful, like springy way. Back body strong and broad, front body long and soft and open. So um, there's 10 key parts of the body. I can't, you know, I'm not going to be able to go through them all today, but just so you know, from the physical standpoint, you can, um, you know, I'll just talk about some of the physical benefits and then I'll go through some mental and emotional and spiritual. But the phys physical, physically, the, the front of the face even, you'll start to like not feel so wrinkly <laughs> because you, you start to soften and breathe into your skull and everything kind of expands and opens and, you know, I mean, we, you know, we all get wrinkles, of course, but you, you think about it, the front of the whole front of the body gets closed off over time as we age, but it doesn't have to. So if you use your awareness in your back of your head and lift up, whew, the front of the face softens. The, the, your neck doesn't get so, you know, I, I used to have much more of it. I don't have so much now, but it doesn't do the double chin so much. You get to open that up. And then um, you don't have as much shoulder pain because your front body's not like pulling down on your head, hanging on your back. A lot of us have that problems. I know, I mean, I know what the world is like. It's and I do it too. We're sitting at the computer for days, you know, writing a book or or <laughs> or on, you know, doing whatever. We we can all be there at some point. So or driving for hours and hours. Um, so you just you this is just an opportunity to practice a new way. And in the beginning, it's hard to keep it the whole time. You do it a little bit and then whew. But you're like literally reforming your body, and that's another piece of the bow spring I'm gonna tell you about. This is the cool thing. Listen up. The body, the bones and the muscles don't hold you up. They give you form. But the springy connective tissue is what holds you up. So the connective tissue is like a sweater. If you pull one in, doo -doo 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 -doo, something else is affected. And, and it covers, uh, it connects the muscle to the bone. It's a springy, viscous, fluidy, uh, material and it also covers each muscle fiber the entire muscle if you think like it's a, a steak if you that kind of looks clear film on the outside is a connective tissue and then even down to the cellular level a cell is uh, totally covered in connective tissue so connective tissue is very watery and so it's really important to stay hydrated and very um, lubricated on the inside lube your inside lube your inside drink lots of you know or you know get coconut milk or or oils you know lots of fat not much animal fat plant fat I'd recommend but so your insides stay lubricated and then and then also uh, you have lots of water in your connective tissue and if you have lubrication and water you feel really um, uh, you have the ability to open more basically you don't feel so closed off and so emotions even can make our connective tissue uh, uh, tight and so what the bowspring practice does it works the connective tissue it gets you in a shape and it teaches you the direction of your connective tissue so it's like you know we could for example I always say this like your calf muscle for example it's two muscles at, at a certain point it's two muscles and so if you are always walking thinking that your uh, calf is one muscle, you're going to walk differently. It's like it's not going to, it's going to get close together like one muscle. And that's what happens to most people. You'll feel the back of your calf back by, uh, up by your knee 
probably pretty tight. It's like, whoo, it's two, it's two muscles there. So the bow spring does this amazing thing where it teaches you like how to shape your body, what direction even to the calf muscle going up versus the calf muscle stretching down. It makes a huge difference. And that's all about the connective tissue or fascia. The word fascia is spelled F-A-S-C-I-A. It's this really cool uh, area of, um, a body of knowledge basically that more there's a lot more research coming out it has a lot it's like the highway system for the uh for the nervous uh, for the nervous system it's like the highway for the nervous system so i'm not going to go there yet i'm going to talk a little bit about the physical form so your face gets softer your throat opens your heart opens uh so you don't have as much shoulder pain uh tennis elbow kind of feelings can go away you know it's a process this happens over time of course also, uh, most arthritis starts in the thumb. So your thumb can actually, you can get rid of arthritis in your hands. The skin on your hands, I know I've showed this before, but I, I, it makes me happy. I used to always feel like my hands looked like old lady hands. They were really wrinkly. And I didn't like that. And it was because I was always doing this. And I, I talk with my hands a lot. And so I think I still kind of, you know, I have to watch that. But I now have a form that lets my hands just soften. I know some people that practice in the beginning, it's like, will be like a gorilla, like, ah, do it hard. And so really the seed hands and the bowspring are the form that we use a lot. It's about softening and letting the bones float and the connective tissue that's springy and watery. You let it do the work. And it's connected all the way up here to the heart, to the wings. Um, and so the bowspring is a dynamic form of yoga. It's um, an opening form of yoga. Okay, it's springy. It's springy. That's what dynamic basically means. And it also um, gives you an opportunity to build a relationship. It gives you way more self-awareness. It's very mindful. So we don't, you know, do things with the tips of the fingers, the tips of the toes. So you, your feet, bunions can go. You can get rid of your bunions. You can help with your. Uh, you probably straighten your knees. Straighten your knees when you stand a lot, and uh, have your heels down when you sit a lot. So we teach you just a few things you can do even day to day life that will help your knees feel softer. A lot of people have knee problems, knee replacements, hips, same thing. Uh, low back, digestive, pro you know, issues with uh, the the hormonal highways can start to open up again. You know, people their pelvic floor opens, they release. Um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about the emotional. So the pelvic floor, the hips hold a lot of tension. So the emotional, emotional um, growth that's possible because your body holds on to things that have happened to you in the past, accidents, uh, um, emotions. You know, your your feelings were hurt. Ugh. You know, uh, you got a car accident. You know, your your ribs are still kind of holding on. You don't you know, want to be touched there. Uh, you know, I grew up as an abused child. Uh, and so, and there were some things that my mother did that it didn't feel good. And she would do it regular. And so my um, throat, like I was always this kind of person who did not like my, did not want to open my throat up. And so what the bowspring does, it allows you the opportunity to open up. And even as women, I know there's a lot of men and women, but women in particular have a hard time speaking their truth. And when you physically get in this form that opens your throat and allows this internal space to open, you feel this connection between your heart and your head open up. And you're like, okay, I can speak my truth. I can speak my thoughts. And there's, there's, this, there's just more alignment. It's like you get less of that feeling of um, <laughs> you say something and then you're like, that's not a, at all how I meant it to come out. <laughs> and I ha and I still have that some, but um, I don't have that as much. I don't know if any of you guys ever had that where you're like, uh, I, I just said that thing and that's not at all what I meant. I wanted it to be nicer. Or I wanted it to be stronger. Or I wanted it to be sweeter. Or, um, what the bowspring does is it even, you know, opening up the physical form. I, sh I walked you guys through radiant heart earlier in the, in the video, but then Radiant channel is a whole nother level. It's amazing. It takes some time to get there, to get the whole channel to kind of open up uh, from the top of your head down to your pelvic floor. And I know I keep mentioning pelvic floor. I message me and I'll kind of just tell you where it is and how to kind of open it and soften it. Part of it is to keep your mouth open some more. Not so much tight jaw. Mm. Tight jaw, tight body. So, um, 
I'm going to talk a little more about the emotional effects, uh, emotional potential with the bow spring yoga. Because it's a dynamic form, you start to feel happier. <laughs> you just start to feel like brighter in life because you know what is what feels like uh, happier. I mean, something. I'm not saying sitting still is not happy. You can be super duper happy sitting still. And most of us sit still too much and we kind of get in this like stuck place energetically. So you're moving your energy so much. We, you know, we skip, we cartwheel. We do all this like fun stuff. I, we have 75 year old men and women going upside down. Uh, everybody's able to spin around in a class of, you know, 30 people this morning and do wild or what a wilder thing, a version of wild thing, wilder thing. Um, and so this dynamism, this springiness, this ability to kind of get in a form and mindfully move it, it actually, it brings more lightness. Reason Because when you feel light in the heart, you feel light in the mind. You feel safe, you feel grounded, you feel connected with people uh, or yourself, really. You're like, wait, that looks kind of awesome. Uh, and so that's what the bow spring can do for you. It, it really helped me, you know, when I moved to Denver, I was in a, I was in a hopeful place, but it was dark. I was scared, um, you know, going, like I said, with her divorce. And I just, I was restarting my entire life, moving everything, left everything behind, uh, my career, uh, my friends. Uh, I, I didn't know anybody out here. I knew one person, like, sort of. Um, and then what the bow spring did, it, like, enlivened me like woke me up, literally woke me up which i'll talk about the you know the mint i woke me up to i had already started waking up somewhat to my thoughts and this is what is amazing about yoga in general so anybody out there who thanks for whoever's been here and had to go and whoever's coming back i love y'all um so i had started doing yoga and some of you who are into yoga and if you're not into yoga not yoga yoga you what one of the prime first thing it does it, it wakes you up to your thoughts you start to become aware that you're you're not just like thinking things and running through life you're noticing that you're thinking things and running through life <laughs> and Eckhart Tolle uh he's a brilliant uh would, would say an awakened man brilliant awakened man who's a spiritual teacher and sort of a truth teacher what some would say um, it talks a lot about presence, being present in the now, and that's, you know, the reality. Um, but what he says is when you bring your awareness to what's going on, you, you immediately shift your consciousness, lift your vibration, uh, become more uh, connected, intelligent, basically, smarter in a way. Uh, so you start in yoga and the bow spring in particular, you start to become aware. You're like, wow. I didn't realize I was like bending over that way. I didn't realize I was standing up that way, sitting that way, walking that way. And then what that does is when you start to notice how you're, how you're grabbing things, how you're picking up your water bottle, how you're setting down your knee on the floor, you start to notice your thoughts too. The physical, you know, your body is doing things because your brain is telling it to. So once you get in tune with the body, you start to notice what the heck's going on in the brain. Woo! And I don't know anybody here, but this um got in tune with what your thought what's going on with your thoughts for the first time i remember when i did i was like holy macaroni i am not nice to myself <laughs> i am not saying nice things to myself at all i had a situation where at the first this was when i was taking my power yoga training which i love it strengthened me a lot but it definitely did, i needed more softening and that's what both brings done for me and so you know everybody's a different place some need softening some need strengthening and and the bowspring was, you know, came along my path at the right time, right after I strengthened some. But um, I heard my brain during the, I heard my brain say this, and you may, I wonder if you have this kind of uh, talk in your mind, what they say, monkey mind, where you're not saying very good stuff, like, oh, you shouldn't have done that. Oh, you should do that. Oh, you could have done that. And, you know, I was calling myself, you're, I, I was saying, you're so fucking stupid. That was my line that I realized that I had been saying probably for years and I didn't even know it <laughs> until yoga helped wake me up, wake my, woke up my body, woke up my mind-body connection. It was asking me to do things that I had never done with myself before, connect with the inside of myself. I had never done that before. Um, and so I started, you, you too can start catching your thoughts. And then when you catch them, 
boom, that's a moment to shift on. You can laugh at them with amusement or amazement. One of my teachers, she says that, she's taught me that. You hear your thoughts and and she says you, two, two options. Uh, um, you, you, you can look at them with amusement. Oh, wow, that's, that's really funny that I'm saying you're so stupid because I'm not. Um, or two, amazement, like, wow. Wow, my mind is, my, my thoughts are not very nice to me. Wow, you know, <laughs> what more can you say, you know? And then because you start putting judgment on like, oh, I shouldn't be saying that. There it is again. It's just another like, boom, on your, you know, on your poor little soul. Um, so yoga, the bow spring in particular, I would say wakes you up super quick because it's so dynamic. I don't know. Um, it's not for everybody. No, no, let me step back. That's not true. I'll take that back. It is for everybody. The bow springs for everybody, but not everybody is ready because <clears throat> it asks you to release a lot of emotion because it's getting into these places that you've never really got into before. It's asking you to soften and be fluid like water, like mother earth. You're 70 some percent water like mother earth. And what the bow spring does, it asks you to be more like mother earth. It asks you to be primal, <sighs> open, fluid, not stiff. Uh, stiff and solid is fine. But that's not what everybody wants. Some people want to open up, become more fluid, dynamic, have a more smile on their face. I'm going to show you uh, a couple things, and then and then uh, as I stand up, I'm going to walk back here. So with the bow spring, there's uh, I like to say this: less straight line, military. And more Jamaican <laughs> But here's the my, my coach reminds me, like, you know, you gotta remind people to go from the core. And with the bow spring, so the core is the belly, and with the bow spring, we say actually soften the belly. So instead of so there's a curve, and I'm gonna explain this back curve too, because it's a key part of the practice that if you were just to see us all bow springers go like this, go like this, boop, you would think our low back would be hurting. And it would be if we're doing that. But we're not. We're doing two other things I'm going to talk about in a minute. Um, but with the core, your core in the bowspring practice is the center of your heart space. The space right behind your breastbone, right in front of your spine. It's right in the center of your rib cage. And so, like I said earlier, even if you're like this bending over, we, all, we say bend your knees. Like this, if you have the, your heart, the center of your ribs lifting up, away from the, the floor, it's so much lighter. On Your entire experience in life is lighter. If you keep your awareness, shift your self, where you're living from, right, out of your head and down here. At any time, you can walk. Uh, one of my clients, she actually, this is a shirt, I think one of her shirts that she gave a friend who gave it to me. <laughs> but she said, she told me this amazing story one day about how she was walking out of, a, uh, I think, the gym, and she tripped and, and fell on her, dropped her keys, and she fell, but caught herself, and, you know, she just did this whole uh, demonstration of what happened, and basically her point was that her back body helped lift her up. And she didn't fall, she didn't bruise her knee, she didn't get, you know, um, little pebbles in her skin or anything hurt herself. She was able to lift up like a, like a, uh, like a superhero, you know, that back body, you have wings, strong. So, so the ribs is where, the center of the ribs is where the heart space is where you want to keep soft and open and lifted, floaty away from the earth. And the, the hands and the arms, they're like wings. And there's, there's a whole bunch I could teach you later, not now. But I want to talk a little bit about the low back, too, because that's the primary place that looks different um, in the bowspring practice. So you'll see bowspring, the pictures from all around the world. John Fran and Desi Springer, they've been traveling around the world, spreading the bowspring. Uh, helping people open and expand and literally see a new way of living, a more youthful, uh, dynamic posture, movement uh, practice. So what you'll see if people all around the world are doing, you'll, they're, they're, they have this curve here. And what this curve is, it's what we'll call a spool, okay? 
uh, S P O O L, a spool. So we have spool around the waist and spool around the throat, and then you have the head, the ribs, and the hips. And those hips, ribs, head can twirl <laughs> around the spools, okay? And your spine is like, I like to think of it like a snake, okay? So you keep a lot of awareness in your spine, you want to lengthen, and you can you know, go side to side. The, the way that the curve though happens in the back, this is key, 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 key. Because so, so many people will look at that and be like, oh, that's no good for your back, it must hurt. It would if you were doing it from your back. But we're doing it from, where the curve gets created from the glutes rising up and the low ribs expanding wide and lifting up. Glutes rise, low ribs expand, and then there's like this super, uh, it's easy to move back and forth, it's not tight. It is tight if the glutes and the ribs aren't engaged. In order to get the ribs really engaged, it takes breath, takes straight arms, engagement from the toes and the fingers of the whole system. Like I said, I don't want to go into the whole thing right now, but I want to talk, just talk about a few things that you'll see, not only with me, but all the, all the other pictures, all the other you know, posts from people around the world is this low back curve. And the low back curve is from the low glutes rising up and the ribs full. Then it's amazing because what happens is the front body can open, feels very vulnerable. That's a big part of the bowspring practice too. It's you build your back body strong, open up, and then your front body can lengthen. Emotionally, it's very vulnerable feeling. The whole front side of your body holds a lot of the your nerves. It holds your facial expressions. It holds where your voice comes from. It holds what, if you were to point to yourself, you're not gonna go like this, you're gonna go here. So the bowspring actually asks you to open up this way. But it does it in a way where you're actually engaging the fascia, the connective tissue network, so that you can have the in, then you can bring your awareness to the inside space to push against that fascia. And then you get to basically all around your body, in your feet, in your head, in your hands, in your legs, in your uh, belly, even, uh, you get more space, you get more awareness, you get to know yourself better, literally. You get to physically know yourself better, you get to release emotions, past trauma, you get to be more in tune in the moment. People say to me, there's like now, I, <clears throat> I had a man say to me recently, he said, you don't get triggered by much, do you? <laughs> and I thought, wow, wow. Wow, I, I, um, I, it's relative, but uh, I don't get that triggered by much. I'm able to really see my place in everything. The bowspring is one part of a lifestyle practice called Sri Daiva. Sri Daiva means divine destiny, what be, be, meaning you can co-create your life with the divine. You can work with your energy, the universal intelligence, whatever you want to call it your spirit, your body, your mind system can work together. Um, yeah, and the bowspring, so on the spiritual side, it's, it's. Uh, I had a spiritual awakening in 2014. It's probably the best thing that's ever happened to me in my life. And I think, you know, I was already on the path probably, it's probably why I moved to Denver, it didn't really make sense to move to Denver, but, um, and I think the, my first year of yoga had opened me up, but when I got here, the fascia, like I said earlier, I was gonna talk about the fascia, it's the highway for the nervous system. And when you are using, the bowspring is asking you on a high level, in every part of your body, inside and out, <laughs> using willpower and confidence, openness, it's asking you to tap into your nervous system, your fascia. Your nervous system is the, you know, the the um, energy that runs through your body. You know, it's like a, 
mm, a connector and then using uh, bringing your breath into it you're tapping in to spirit you're you're opening your capacity to receive to surrender there's it's this amazing path of softening surrendering and building strength all at once unreal strength self-awareness softening surrendering four s's probably <laughs> i love alliteration i love lists but it, it really has it helps me soften soften into my heart soften even to my mother who beat the shit out of me as a kid and i couldn't stand her i, I tried for a decade or more than a decade i tried for 15 years to try to love that woman and i couldn't until the bow spring helped me you know I, and, and i'm not the only one you know those clients who are like they're they were going to leave their marriages their relationships and now they're staying or they realize that person isn't for them uh i i have like massive forgiveness for not only my ex but myself through the whole situation like i see everything now like why it happened the way it happened um and even parts i don't understand like it's okay whatever i you know we're all human and we make mistakes and i have so much love and compassion for for what is what was what will be um, I'm not pissed off about stuff anymore. The bowspring gives you this capacity to, to feel more. So the bowspring yoga uh, in general, but even self-awareness practices, it may not be for you because you've got to feel. And that's okay. You may not be ready to feel. Most of Americans aren't ready to feel. That's why we're numbing ourselves with, you know, uh, food and TV and sex and um, shopping and I don't know what else, overworking out. All of that. Hey, brother. Oh, my brother's on. I've been on for like 40 minutes. I'm talking about the bowstring. This is the thing I can talk about for days and days and days. But um, I can do a shorter video too to give like some bullet points of what it's all about. But you know, just talking about the my. I love this. I tell people this, Joe, a lot. Um, that my brother says I had an eat, pray, love moment, and I did. And yoga was sort of like my pathway for that, where you know I started to get healthier, I became vegetarian, I stopped drinking, and it was it, it was sort of like fluid. It just sort of happened, and had you know got in touch with spirit, and now you know I even did Reiki energy. Uh, you know I do Reiki energy work, and uh, during my attunement, I saw. Jesus and Cleopatra and all this. I mean, I could, I don't want to get up too deep here, but um, well, I'll talk about that another day. But what's neat is like when you, so the bow spring is like, it's literally, it's for sort of like the rebellious yogi. It's, it's asking you to be primal. It's asking you to stick your butt out and move side to side and look a little weird by walking on your toes and slow down. <laughs> so any form of movement, any form of practice is good that, that suits you, but this is one form that um has worked really well for me and it's 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 and it's asking i think of it almost like it's asking you to go back to yoga to movement before yoga um or 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 maybe a, a form of kind of like a feminine fluid uh it, it's interesting because it and so i always kind of go back and forth like is it a feminine form of movement or is it a masculine form of movement because it's uh it has it has both it marries both. I think of it over and over, and it's like both. It asks us to be still and, and steady and open, pure consciousness on the inside, and uh, fluid all around that, dancing on the outside. <clears throat> so I have some notes here. Uh, they're actually from my teacher training, and I'm just going to look at them and see if there's anything else that mm, emotional intelligence i just want to read a few things here you become more socially aware I, I most of my clients actually are i think of like i help helpers and so they're people who like want to make a difference in the world very ambitious leaders and they're in their head too much and they're not in their body enough so it's a little bit harder to connect with people so they want to have better sales for example or they want to heal the relationships or they want to open up to their own grandness and and actually what that does this is really neat about this practice too it's like when you start taking this practice teaches you how to be in a winning state of body, not just mind, a winning state of body. A lot. You practice that, you're going to start winning more. I mean, you're just, whatever winning means to you, winning in relationships, winning in the, your bank account, for example, you get, everybody that I work with that gets this posture, it's like, uh, they're, they get a new job, they build more, you know, clients, whatever it may be. They, they just, you see your capacity differently in the world. You're like, wait a minute, I'm looking up and out. I can see there's more opportunity. 
and my heart's open to it and I'm rooted in my hips. Okay. Uh, social awareness that you, yeah, you just become more socially aware of how you impact and, and the oneness kind of the, how everything's connected. You're, you're tapping into your fascia network, this whole web of connected tissue. You're really tapping in to the network of it all. So I won't go too far in that, but it's amazing. Um, emotional management. Yeah. Anxiety and depression. Big, big, you know, big issues. We live in a very uh, anxious and depressed world. Um, you know, it's very hard to be present. And so, what's neat about any any physical movement practice, this bowspring, in particular for me and, and, and my clients and the people, my colleagues, my teachers, and everybody. Um, but when you're able to give your mind a rest by using your breath, for example, to get into your body, um, it's like a, a massage for your for your brain. <laughs> uh, you start to realize that the thoughts that are happening are not true, and you get to create new thoughts, and you get to be sweeter. Your 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 thoughts start to be sweeter to not only other people but to yourself, to past, to your your you know, vision for the, the future, which you don't really, you know, you have a vision, of course. And that's, that's the cool thing, too. When you go inside, you actually start to see, like, what do I want in life? Like, what is going to serve my happiness? And then also, like, what is the world calling me to do? Like, what what would be a good match with me in the world? What would be a good match with me in relationships? What could be a good match with me in my food? What would be a good match with me in and um, where I want to live, what kind of career do I want to have, what would be a good match in my in my financial situation, like what serves me? That's what's neat. And then how do I integrate that with the world? You start to see yourself connected. You're connecting to yourself, so you start to see like, oh my gosh, that squirrel in the tree. Like we have a re we can potentially have a relationship right now if I were just to pause, you know, and connect. It's, it's neat. It's neat. I know that sounds a little cuckoo maybe, but I, as I just said it, I thought. I'm sure somebody understands this. Where you pause and you look at the squirrel, or the, uh, or even a dog or your cat, and they may be across the room. And you, and you just kind of pause and you send some energy there and you give some love towards them. You're like, wow, they'll look over at you, right? And so the bowspring, the yoga, any self-awareness practices, they give you the opportunity to connect more on a deeper level with everything around you. It's pretty fascinating. Okay, so that's about all I have today. I, I talked and talked and talked, and I could talk. So much more. There's some bowspringers around the world who I'm going to chat with about doing some interview or um, not interviews, but I don't know what you call it. Like two people talking, conversation. Just a conversation. Two people talking about it because everybody has different life experience. You know, for me, it's helped me heal things that happened in my past. It's helped me figure out, like, you know, I'm I'm still figuring out. I'm working on it, like day to day. You know, my true essence. Who am I? Like, what's gonna you know make me happy and what's gonna serve the world in a in a bigger, brighter way? And and you know, what skills do I have that could help? The, you know the world that's that's the, the mindset that I have that's where I live it doesn't have to be where you live but that's where I live um, and uh, you know the spiritual component you know I see my mat I lay my mat down it feels like a very sacred place to me because I'm you know I'm there to like open and expand and connect and just you know be in touch with what the mystery of life is more and more and more uh, so that's what it's done for me you know other clients it's brought on like so much uh, healing in their in their relationships, for example, it's brought them a new, it's brought them more money in their career, brought them more wealth, I, I would say abundance, but really like time, resources, awareness. Um, and when your thoughts aren't driving you cray cray, you feel so much better in your body and, and everywhere you go. So uh, if you have any questions, I'm actually starting a, um, a program at the end of next month. The, gonna get a group of women together and teach the Bowspring and do the neat thing about, uh, like I said, the Bowspring, it opens up when you open the connective tissue, open up places for emotion and uh, to be released. And so you cry a lot, potentially. You're like, holy crap, why are all these, uh, this, this, this thing that happened to me 20 years ago? You know, people that, you know, some sort of um, trauma, some sort of abuse, some sort of something that was said, some argument that would happen 20 years ago, maybe. You don't even remember, you forgot about it. It'll start, it'll come up all of a sudden and you're like, it's just spinning in your head. So the program I'm doing, it's like, uh, it, it works on some mindset and some self-care and, and works through the different energetic parts of your body 
um, to help align you as you go through the the movement practice. You go through the body movement, you open up your energy centers, and then you kind of work with that energy for a couple weeks at a time. And uh, then we're going to do a retreat in Manitou Springs at the end of it in November. So I'm super excited about that because it's a beautiful. Colorado is just amazing. So I, I'll, I'll uh, if you're interested in that, let me know. P, uh, send me a personal message. I'm going to put some stuff out on Facebook and all the social media and emails and all of that kind of stuff too to give more details. But if you want to know, I've got a couple women right now that are going to be um, part of it, and I'd love to have you. Bow Springs amazing and. And you know, there's it's just it's just one entry point into the world of yoga. Yoga is about learning who you are so you can be closer to your truer self. That's all I'll say about that for now. <laughs> uh, I love you all. Namaste. Your radiance is beautiful. Keep shining. Keep going inside, opening, softening, listening, seeing what's there. Bless, blessings, blessings.